Chris Young, and I'm going to believe Sandler and others, uh, Chris Young was in control already. There wasn't some type of power struggle that would have taken place down the stretch. I, I, I don't think, as you said, this is like college football recruiting where you got to let it be known mm -hmm. that Chris Young is in charge and not John Daniels, and that's going to influence a free agent in the offseason. Something happened. Either something happened in the past 48 hours or Ray Davis wants to win over a little bit of the fan base because he knows how despised and disliked J.D. was. Those are the only two things that I can figure out. I don't believe Chris Young is happy with the way it went down. It sounded like, and this surprised me yesterday, I was told that more people were upset at the stadium yesterday over the JD news than over the Chris Woodward news. That surprised me a little bit because everyone publicly would look at Woody as a more likable figure than JD. Now, if you spent any time with JD, it would quickly change your mind with how uh, genuine and how candid and how nice he is. But I was surprised when I heard that uh, more people were upset over the way this went down versus the Woody News. Your calls, by the way, on John Daniels' legacy and how much did you celebrate yesterday at 877-881-1053. Chris and Arlington will get to you in just a second. You know, people that, I think there's a perception about the Ivy League folk that, you know, you just don't like Ivy League people. Like, they are they think they're smarter than you. They yeah. know it. Yep. But the reality is, is they also are. Um, <laughs> they are. John is incredibly bright, and but you know I understand how the perception is is that you know Ivy League people are more difficult to like than just your you know your general everyday everyday guy or girl. Uh, but that wasn't John. John was like very very likable. And Nolan Ryan's shadow was a curse for him. He was never going to escape it. Maybe with the ring, maybe with a title, but but even then Nolan would be getting credit. This is a beloved figure that people are just never going to change their minds about. No matter what the reality was in terms of how those teams were built, John Daniels was going to be seen by most as uh, someone who pushed Nolan Ryan out. JD was Jerry, and Nolan was Tom Landry. And that narrative is just never going to change in many people's minds. Chris, oh, go ahead, Troy. I was about to say, you're absolutely right. But to go back to you pointing out that people seemed upset at the ballpark, well, the reason why is people love nostalgia. You love nostalgia. So when John Daniels leaves, you're like, man, 2010, 2011 was great. And John Daniels was part of that. Man, I'm going to miss that guy. It doesn't matter what he's done recently. It doesn't matter that he's given this guy this massive contract. What's his name again? Marcus? You know what? RJ, don't say it. You've already screwed up once this morning. Yeah. Don't, don't forget all that. Forget about kicking Nolan Ryan out the door. It's nostalgia. You reflect back to those good old days the Rangers had over a decade ago, and then you go, yeah, I'm going to miss him. What is JD's legacy as GM? 877-881-1053. Chris in Arlington, start us off. You're live on Sean and RJ. Hey, gang. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I'm, thanks for taking my call first because I, I know there's going to be a lot of negativity uh, spoken about JD from the fan base, which and I'm going to preface that by saying I kind of agree that in leadership and in sports you need to change things sometimes. Yeah. So I'm glad he's gone in that way. But uh, his lasting legacy to me, uh, I was a GM of a restaurant uh, over by the ballpark for years and years. Yeah. Fox and Hound. Go over there for some Vietnamese food. But uh, so I used to GM that place. And uh, JD, uh, even in the time Fat Levine was there, was coming in every once in a while. He probably made it a rotation. And uh, I would see him every once in a while. I was the only baseball fan there, so he, he wasn't bothered. Uh, but I, there was an accident at the beginning of 2020, a car accident, uh, cost the lives of two of my employees and damaged another one uh, almost irreversibly. And John, unsolicited, um, un, unmotivated by anyone, just what happened, uh, donated a lot of sum of money. It's harder than me. Hey, Chris, Chris, you got you to fix your phone. I got to hear the end of this story. Uh, move move two steps to the left or right. Do something to fix it because I got to hear this. Do a handstand. Do you, do you got me now? Yes. Car accident. Okay, yes. 
Okay, car accident. Lost two of my employees. Uh, one was damaged irreversibly, almost. Uh, she actually got better. Uh, but John Daniels, without any any type of solicitation from any employees or anything like that, any me talking to him about it, donated and got, uh, I think, the Do It For Do It Foundation uh, to donate a large sum of money to the employee that survived and didn't have to do that. And that's the legacy I'm going to remember about John Daniels is that he – love this community and he loved this area and he uh entrenched himself in it and made himself a positive influence around and no matter the negativity of his last few years as a gm that's what i'm going to remember about john daniels thank you for the call chris great great story uh thank you for sharing it with us yeah it, it really is and just underscores what you know that john was a really good dude and uh you know cared yeah, he honestly cared about the about the local community. One thing I think that's going to be lost: we completely understate how crippling the loss of Thad Levine and AJ Preller were. Mm. Not and, and look and, and and the John Daniels haters, you know, y- y- y'all could sit down for this. <laughs> like the idea that they were only good because of AJ and Thad. Like who discovered AJ and Thad? You know, who who gave them their platform? That's the job. The, the idea that the job of the CEO or the manager or the boss is to do all the work. That isn't the job. The job is to delegate the responsibility to the right people. Okay? Only control freaks do all the work. You delegate the responsibility to other people. So it makes a great manager, makes a great boss, makes a great CEO. Uh, you know, John gets the credit. For those guys and the work they did. Mm. That's just the reality. Uh, And and losing, I'm sorry, two of the best GMs in Major League Baseball that you had on your staff and you had three heads all coming together is crippling for an organization. And if you, this is what makes Nick Saban so amazing. You know, he loses coordinator after coordinator. And Belichick did the same thing. Didn't matter what coordinator he lost. Now they didn't turn out to be great, you know, you know, great at their craft either, doing what else they were doing. They were great position coaches, though. And it's very difficult when you lose elite talent to be able to replace it. Fletch in Grand Prairie. Fletch, you're live on the home of the Rangers with Sean and RJ. What's up, guys? I don't mean to be meathead Mike over here, <laughs> but the ownership gotta go. These bums need to get run out of town. I told I told Troy uh, a couple minutes ago, if this were Boston, if this was New York, even Houston <laughs> or L.A., these guys, we would have pitchforks and, and torches getting these bums out of town, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, I had season tickets last year for about six years, and we got hoodwinked into this new ballpark. Oh, we're going to get pitchers. Show me the pitchers, Bob. Where are the pitchers? <laughs> Where are the pitchers? And then at the end of a hundred lost season, we get an email saying, "Hey, thank you for your for your contributions to to our fat pockets, but we're jacking up the prices on parking and season tickets." After a hundred lost season, I should get a refund. <laughs> we can't even beat the Oakland A's. Yeah, it's an embarrassment. We can't beat the Rough Riders, man. Bad news bears. <laughs> These guys are bums. And they're, hey, get your money. Like that, get your money. Everybody, get your money. But golly, if I were the, and they throw half a billion at two players, I like Seager and Simeon, but that's their, that, that's their way of showing, oh, we're going to invest? No, that's a bunch of phony baloney. If I were them, I would have poached the entire front office at Tampa and Oakland. Fletch, great call. God, wow. I, love, I love a phony baloney line. That, that is some good stuff. Listen, what do we always say about Jerry Jones and Mark Cuban? Quit being out in front of the cameras all the time. Focus on the team. Yeah. You're getting too loud. It ain't about you. It's about us getting championships and hanging banners and having parades. And then here come these guys. Yep. And they never want to talk. And then Ray Davis gets out there yesterday. He he might as well have been the, the owner of the Broncos. Thank Roger uh, Goodell, uh, Commissioner Goodell. <laughs> Plus that's, I mean, I'm like, Goodell. I never see this guy. This guy, by the way. He just, sounded half asleep. Hey, just because I know someone at D Magazine. Oh! Uh, uh, Ray Davis has turned down interview after interview after interview. He's a, he's a recluse. The, these are the things that I've, I've, I've written down and been told about Rangers ownership. Uh, cheap. 
emotional, petty. Well, I'm writing down petty because there's I don't I, I need to hear a good reason why you did, didn't let John Daniels just retire after six weeks. I I I, I need to hear why you couldn't have been mm-hmm. classy in that way. Inconsistent. They're the ones I think to blame. The the biggest fan criticism of JD is you should have just stuck with the rebuild. Instead, you tried to you know you 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 tried to win us over briefly with with a little spending here and there. I think that's ownership who gave that mandate. Okay, we're not going to sit here and do this for five years. Go and pull off a trade. Let's be buyers at a deadline. Let's go spend the half a billion dollars and then chicken. You don't you don't want to explain things. You only want to show your face and you only want to talk when you want your new little stadium and your roof and your AC. That that speaks to Fletch and his last phone call here on your home of the Rangers. John Daniels is out. Yeah.